Studio B at KPRC Channel 2. Houston Live starts now. Well, TGIF, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Welcome to Houston Live here at 3 o'clock. It's September 4th, if you can believe it, Courtney. I know. I can't believe it. And I feel terrible. Why? Because yesterday was my brother's birthday, and I forgot <laughs> to wish him a happy birthday on the show. Oh. My well. eldest brother, Bob. September 4th was his birth, or 3rd was his birthday. I don't even know <laughs> what no day it is. I know. Yesterday was his birthday. Does he watch Houston Life, though? He I does mean... in the fine state of Arizona. Oh, so he was he was tuned in expecting you to wish him he a He didn't happy say birthday. that, but I got lots of photos of, like, him with his cake and then him with the card that I sent him. But you and called him. We did. We did speak, and, but I just, I felt bad. Happy birthday, Bob. Don't feel bad. My eldest brother. Don't feel bad. I should feel bad. No, I'm just glad. Remember the other day we had the conversation about grammar? You know, so I got so many messages from people, and I love that you guys care about this as much as we do here at Houston Life. <laughs> and when you said you feel so bad, which is totally correct, how many times do you hear someone say they feel badly? Badly. Like their ability to feel is impaired? Yes. So they feel badly? It's like, I feel poorly about something. Anyway, I'm glad you feel bad. I feel about bad. About your brother, because that is absolutely correct. Well, happy belated birthday. And yes. he's spending time with your mom, right? Yes, yes. My mom's in, in Arizona now, and sweet so they're Eileen. just having sweet Eileen. Hello, everyone in Arizona. Thanks for tuning in. Happy birthday, Bob. How do you so spell your mom's name? It's I like a pirate, right? A Y E. I. -E. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, what else? You, you said you have a little update for me. Okay, so yesterday we talked about, this was like a roundabout conversation, and I talked about how I got this gift for my birthday, no clue who it was from, and um, I got a text from my sister-in-law, Bob's wife, my sister-in-law, Aurora, and my mom, totally spaced it, the dog mom t-shirt is from my mom. She sent it to me. <laughs> she, it, it, there just was no gift card or anything. And she said, you know, there are so many times that I was thinking, oh, I got to call her today and let her know that there's this package coming and it's from me. Oh, I that's know. sweet. But she sweet found mama. out about the confusion by watching Houston Life? Yes. Yesterday. So, you know, it all, all things come together on the app if you're not able to watch us, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad to know that the confusion doesn't fall far from the tree. It doesn't. No. I am more like her every day, <laughs> and I'm okay with it. Right, Mom? It's great. It's a compliment. <laughs> I mean that only in the best way. Well, listen, we are so glad it's Friday. We also have a really great show coming up. Oh, absolutely. Yes, I know. So this is really exciting, and we're, we're are, we, the whole world really watched this happen right in front of our eyes. We are talking about... Um, Ange, um, I'm sorry, his last name is Hills. Ange Hills. Like That's Hills, right. But with a Z. So we all watched as he quickly recreated a beautiful painting at the memorial service for George Floyd back in June. Well, now this performance painter is bringing his amazing talent to, to uh, Houston Life. Local artist Ange Hills will be painting live during our show. I guess he doesn't get stage fright because, you know, the pressure would be <sighs> on knowing that people are watching, right? Absolutely. And what I wonder is how does he keep just the perspective? Because he, he so paints talented. such large, large items, right? I mean, how does he actually stand back and see what he's doing. I, I, I'm so excited to see what he's going to do today on Houston Life. Very nice. Very cool. Also, we are getting to know, get it, like Channel I 2, like it. Randy McElvoy, head of the start of football season next week. The Texans will be playing on Thursday. We're going to catch up with the KPRC Channel 2 sports director and anchor about some of his favorite moments on the job, plus life outside of work, and the surprising items Courtney, he collects. I guess he's a collector. Who knew? I know. I can't wait for that conversation. I love Randy McElvoy. Also, uh, country singer Matt Stell is going to join us as well. So great voice, great guy. Can't wait for that conversation. Yeah, and if you are a listener of country music, you've probably heard Matt on the radio before. Industry insiders say that he is the one to watch or the one to listen to. Listen to. Watch and listen to. You know, he did this music video where everyone in the video, he did all the characters. Yeah. Like he was the bartender and the people at the bar and the band on stage. So looking forward to chatting with him. And I just need to bring up, bring everybody back up to speed because yesterday I kind of left you out to, to dry a little bit. Remember? Because <laughs> you, you just mean? did it to me. <laughs> I the only time you. that we actually use our teleprompter <laughs> is just for like our teases. Everything else is basically ad libbed on the show as we talked about. So Derek has the teleprompter controller in front of him. It's very 
small and subtle, it's, right? It's, it's, yes. like, it's like So that's what computer. advances it. Yeah, and you, you go that way to go forward. Right. And the other and way this, to go back. This all stemmed because during, at the height of COVID, um, usually our control room would roll the teleprompter for us. And there was multiple people in there. Well, everybody's working from home. So they brought this out. You were out here by yourself. And I had no idea. I had never actually rolled my own prompter before. Yeah. So, you know, and I did. I anchored by myself and there's a foot pedal, but I always sat on something so my feet never touched the ground. It's a whole thing. So yesterday during the um, horse debacle that we had, I ran the prompter. What and debacle? And apparently... That was not a debacle. I mean, it was so fun. Did I say debacle? I, I mean... That was let good me, TV. Let, me sh let, let everybody see what, what we see. So this is the camera, basically. That's the teleprompter. We have a camera taking a shot of our camera that you see. But and these so, are, those are just notes, though. Those are just like, notes. It's not even... Oh, sneaky TV. Oh, now it's you're so letting sneaky. all of our secrets well, here, out. I'll, let me roll it back. Yeah. So, like, the top of the show just says... It has her name, to very Life. important. Well, I, I put in the date <laughs> because I always forget We never the know date. the date. But then we just sort of, yeah, Adwood, Adwood welcome. welcome. So there you go. And then coming up, whatever. Well, someone rolled straight past this tease here. Because you started reading The World Watched Him Quickly Create. So I was like, oh, she's reading, so I'm going to advance the prompter. <laughs> and then I thought like, it was payback because I didn't advance the prompter yesterday, and it was a whole, like, <laughs> evil eye looking at me on the... <laughs> <laughs> I the apologize. words were rolling backwards. No, yesterday. they were not. Yes, no, they it was were. a problem. It was actually my ploy. I just don't want to roll prompter anymore. I was trying to read the prompter <laughs> yesterday, and Courtney was in control, rolling it backwards. Oh my gosh! So the whole time we were we were teasing a story. I was saying something like, "And coming up later, this is." <laughs> And I just started making stuff. It's great for date night. It's great for families, <laughs> movies. Who knows what we're talking and about? Finally, Courtney. Oh my word! Back I just up. needed to bring everybody up to date on that. And I just need you to never touch this again. I won't. Because it it, it's me perfect. Very what about this crate and barrel thing? What is it? What happened? Do I? Am I not supposed to know? <laughs> Am I not supposed to know? Well, first of all, you said the name of the company, so that's not awesome. Yesterday, Courtney and I were having lunch, right, in the lobby of Channel 2. <laughs> 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 this large box was delivered, okay? So Brandon's birthday was like two weeks ago. Somehow his birthday gift... Got I, lost in the mail. It, it was back ordered or something. Okay. I hope he's not watching right now. So I bought him this new espresso maker. Right. And... So yesterday, I when we're having lunch, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this finally this espresso maker, because we drink a lot of coffee in our yeah. house, it's finally arrived. So I took it out to my car and I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is very lightweight. <laughs> it just felt very lightweight. So we get it home and Brandon, who's opening his gift two weeks late as we're <laughs> opening the gift. <laughs> what? <laughs> I knew something was wrong. It just Extra seemed, lightweight coffee maker? It just seemed really <laughs> off. So I, as he's opening the espresso maker, um, it was just like a simple clear glass bowl. <laughs> no like coffee maker? Even, no, no coffee maker. The wrong item was sent. And How the bowl did... was probably... Not the same price as as what, the a as the espresso maker. maker, right? And so, um, did you go back and look at your receipt? Was it operator error? Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> no! I looked at the the invoice. Like I paid for the espresso maker. Right. right. It said the thing on there. So I don't. If anyone knows anyone who works at Crate and Barrel, could you please let me know? I tried calling them. They say text them. Nothing happened. I'm just going to go to the store today. Yeah. But has that ever happened to you, where you order something and you get? A completely, a completely different thing. I'm worried that I'm going to show up at the store and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, sure. Sure. Sure you did. Sure, this is what was in the box. Well, here's the thing. Oh. You know what I mean? Like accusing me of like swiping the machine and putting just a simple no. glass bowl back in. No. that Because your paperwork has the espresso machine. Yeah, right? I don't know. I'm, I'll let you know how it turns out. Oh, my I didn't word. think that we would end up even talking about it on the show. A. But you told me not. You. Okay. <laughs> You are so funny. Well, Brandon, surprise, I got you a bowl. I thought you said he opened it. I hope you love it.
<laughs> no, I'm just saying. Oh, you like, opened the box. He didn't know what it was supposed to be. So when he he opened the box, and when it was the bowl inside, I was like, whoa, 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 something's wrong. Oh. Do you want me just to tell you what it was supposed and to be? And he said, no, and don't tell like, me. And he was like, no, 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 surprise me. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Yeah. Don't you love when you have unexpected errands that are created for you? I, I know. Love that. It's so fun. It's a, it's a really it's a lot good of time. Fun. Okay, well, should we uh, revisit what's coming up on today's show? Should How we about read that? the prompter? <laughs> good luck. It's me in charge. I know. Okay, well, let's check in with Lauren Kelly. She is in the green room with local artist Ange Hills. Hey, guys. I know you know some of Anja's work all over the world. He's painted some of the most beautiful masterpieces. Most notoriously, you saw him at George Floyd's memorial back in June. He was speed painting, and that was amazing. We'll get to the speed painting in just a little bit. Thank you for joining us today, Anja. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. So what I thought I would do today is just sit down, and you could, you know, maybe paint a portrait of me. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to be painting. <laughs> what he will be doing is creating a very special painting for the Houston Live team. And so stick around throughout the show because we'll keep checking back in with Anch Hills, who's here, to give us a very cool painting for our Houston Live team. You guys can watch us on Facebook Live if you want to. Derek and Courtney, I'm going to take my seat, assume the position, and get ready to have my portrait made. Oh, my gosh, that's so, <laughs> so awesome. cool. It's going to be a portrait of you, Lauren. Okay, we can't wait to see what Anj does, and we will be <laughs> checking in with you a little later on in today's show. Have yeah, fun there. working his magic. Okay, guys, when we come back, he's okay. currently climbing the country radio charts with his latest single, Everywhere But On. We're going to chat with country singer Matt Stell next. Welcome back. In the country music world, there is a rising star you will soon be hearing a lot more of. His name is Matt Stell, and industry insiders are calling him the one to watch. And his latest single, Everywhere But On, is currently on the top 15 on the country charts. And we'd like to say hi to singer-songwriter Matt Stell. Welcome to Houston Life. Hey, man, thanks for having me, y'all. It's pretty awesome that my mom is, uh, is an industry insider. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, moms have a lot of pull in this world, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. love There's also a little bit of a Houston connection for you here, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I, I've got family down there around the woodlands. I, uh, I'm down there around Montgomery, Texas, playing golf every now and then. I kind of started playing music down there, made my first record uh, in Houston. So, uh, yeah, man, I've... I've uh, Spent a lot of time in that area, for sure. And Matt, you have a really interesting story about how this all started. You are self-taught on guitar, and you decided you would just ditch medical school, right? And pursue a career in music. <laughs> well, sort of. That's, sort of. Like, so I had moved to Nashville to, to be a songwriter. I'd actually been around Texas for a while and uh, had some success writing songs uh, there in that scene. And then moved to Nashville to try to do it here. And, Hadn't got the opportunities uh, that I wanted, and, and um, after a after a medical outreach trip to Haiti, I worked alongside some doctors there, and I thought, man, if I was going to do something else besides music, I, this would be it. So I applied to a pre medical program uh, up in, at Harvard's Extension School, and and got in, and I was about. I guess two months uh, from packing up and leaving Nashville, headed up there at, at, when I got the opportunity to write songs, which turned into. Uh, an EP that had uh, a song on it called "Pray for You" that kind of changed my life, and now I, you know, we're we've got the single "Everywhere But On" that's uh, one of my favorite songs I've ever written. So it's it's been a crazy journey for sure. It's really incredible just to hear it because a lot of times when we're listening to the music, we're seeing you climb the charts, right? And we don't really hear a lot about the backstory. Uh, it's really incredible how the stars aligned in your world. Um, let's talk a little bit about quarantine life for you, Matt, because the last time you were here in Houston for concerts was back in December. You played at the uh, 100.3, the Bulls 10-man jam, one of our favorite mm -hmm. events here in town. We love them over there at the Bull. Um, so that was kind of one of the last shows that you did. What's life been like for you now? Well, you know, it's been trying to adjust to a new normal. That was one of the last shows that we played. And, um, you know, since then, it's sort of the silver lining to all this is, you know, being a songwriter is I've had way more time to write songs now than I typically would this time of year because we'd be touring pretty heavy. So um, just kind of the new normal for me, writing songs and um, uh, getting less awful at golf is uh, also pretty <laughs> nice. But, um you know, just like everybody else, trying to try to make our way through this, and uh, you know, so far, I guess, so good. 
Matt, before the show today, I was watching your music video, If I Was a Bar, and it's it's a lot of fun to watch because essentially you are playing all 13 characters <laughs> in this video. We're seeing it on screen right now. Talk to us about <laughs> shooting uh, a video like this. It must have taken quite a bit of time. Well, it took a, it took a full day to uh, actually that picture right there of that guy of me playing the fiddle. I had to Google which hand the fiddle goes in, which hand the bow goes in, just <laughs> just pop up video style uh, here. But um, yeah, we were basically trying to figure out a way to get creative and, and still follow the the guidelines of you know city, state, and and federal stuff. You know about how we can be safe with uh, with COVID. You know and and. The Dustin Haney, the director, came up with this concept, and I loved it because it, it reminds me of a bunch of my favorite movies, like Coming to America, where and the Nutty Professor, where where uh, they're playing Eddie Murphy's playing right. all those different characters. I always thought that was always like my favorite movies, Coming to America. So that's what I treated it as, and I just basically showed up that morning with every stitch of clothing I've ever owned in my life, <laughs> and uh, we just went through it, and it, it took all day, and and it kind of came out pretty cool. I thought I'm glad y'all liked it. Oh, we do for sure. And just going through sort of like your recent successes, your mom did did not send us this list, by the way. Uh, 2019 <laughs> was a breakout year for you. Um, let's see, the song Prayed For You is a multi-week number one platinum certified hit. Uh, held the number one spot for two consecutive weeks on Billboard. You also made your Grand Old Opry debut. I mean, what a year. Are you still kind of pinching yourself? Like, this is really me. This is happening. Yeah, none of what you just read sounds like it is associated with my name. Honestly, it still doesn't feel like that. It's a, it's a pretty crazy ride. But I can tell you this, you know, I, I came up uh, playing team sports, playing basketball, and uh, just like in any team sport, man, it it, uh, it takes a whole lot of people being passionate about something that's bigger than themselves to have any of that kind of success. So, it really has been a lot of like a, a team, a team win. You know, any any of those things like you know radio play or you know gold platinum records and stuff like that it all takes so many people from radio to industry management creative songwriters and all that all the way on down being passionate about something so we just celebrated as a team win for sure well and speaking of team sports in college uh you played basketball coming in at a height of six feet seven inches matt i hope you have a very tall tour bus for when yeah. those live performances <laughs> resume so before we get to the song it's called everywhere but on i know today you've sent us a very special acoustic version of this song but we do want to remind our viewers this is the title track second single the title track from your ep you co-wrote this already top 15 and climbing on those country radio charts so far 75 million streams that's pretty fantastic Man, well, thank y'all very much. This is one of my favorite songs I've ever written. You know, I, it's, I lived a lot of life in this song uh, when I wrote it. And then uh, since I wrote it, I've lived most of the rest of it. So uh, it's one that's very, very special to me. I wrote it with two of my best friends. And, uh, man, it's really special to see it uh, you know, resonate with people. And it'd be a song that people care about because I sure care about it a lot. Well, and we're excited to hear this acoustic version. Let's roll the tape.
Nice. That's amazing. Listen, I'm just letting you know we are officially, Derek and I are starting your petition for the Houston Rodeo 2021. Okay? Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Yeah. We need them out here, everybody. I Come on. I think you can do it. And uh, I mean, I speak for myself and everyone. We are so glad you decided not to go to medical school. <laughs> yes, <Matt>. thank you. <laughs> hey, well, speaking of A, my mother that we talked about earlier, and B, the Houston Rodeo, I need to shout my mom out tonight because she is in the state finals uh, barrel race tonight in, in Arkansas. So oh, my she word. Does well. oh. She's been in polls there tomorrow night. Yeah, my mom's a real bad A, if you. <laughs> that is her. incredible. Incredible. Yeah. That only, is so awesome. That is that is really, really cool. We're going to send her all our good energy, Matt. That's right. Send old Kit Kat some good energy, too. Make sure he turns those barrels real tight. I love it. Kit Kat's the horse. I love it. Hey, listen, we would love to have you in studio when we are back to a normal uh, production here. But in the meantime, we appreciate you and uh, we support you. And thanks for sending in that acoustic version as well. Awesome. We're going to see y'all very soon. Thanks again for having me. Have a great weekend. Sounds you too. Good. Keep climbing those charts, Matt. And we'll break. Welcome back. Now let's get a check of today's headlines with Keith and Lauren, ahead of Channel 2 News at 4. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you guys doing? Happy Friday. Looking forward to a really good weekend. Yes, we are. We have some great stuff coming up on our show. Houston doctors sounding the alarm. As we head into the holiday weekend, trauma injuries, believe it or not, are up 20% compared to this time last year. Health reporter Haley Hernandez has their message on how to try and stay safe. All right, let's go Clutch City. James Harden, Russell Westbrook, the Houston Rockets. They were taking on LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers tonight. I have so many L.A. friends and family. They are talking so much trash already. Mm -hmm. Our game one of the Western Conference semifinals. Do you think the Rockets can beat the Lakers tonight? It is our click to vote question. Just go to click to vote. I'll be interested to see the results of that. Plus food delivery with a little muscle. One restaurant has figured out a way to beefcake up their sales. <laughs> They're hiring bodybuilders to deliver the food. And we're going to find out how much <laughs> the move has helped the restaurant in particular. You may be yeah. surprised. Uh, we're going to break it down by month yeah, and I, how much more they've made I when they started doing that. Is that extra for the sashimi there? The <laughs> a little sashimi. Very sashimi? Nice. The tips good, have probably good, right? increased, I would imagine. I think so too. <laughs> Look out now. Goodness gracious. <laughs> That's a story, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, guys, well, the story for us this afternoon has been the uh, heat in some spots and the showers and thunderstorms in the others. West side getting rocked right now, right, as you get out towards Columbus. What we've got is we've got an upper-level low that's over towards Austin there. It's highlighted. You can't really see it, but it is out there, trust me. And it's been pulling in all this moisture. And this is going to move over top of us as we get in towards tomorrow's forecast. So right now, notice that the haves and have-nots in terms of it's either blazing in the hundreds or we're looking at uh, temperatures in the 70s 
70s and 80s. So this weekend, we'll see more of those storms as we get in towards Saturday. But then Sunday, Monday, it's just back to the heat. And yes, that cold front is still out there, guys. Check it out. Once it gets through Wednesday, by the time we get to Thursday and Friday, we're going to be looking at uh, temperatures there in the 60s and 80s. How about that? That's, all, that's almost football weather right there, right on time. Wait, mm -hmm. <laughs> get out the pumpkin spice lattes, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> guys, I don't know. I need to go back. I don't think that was a bodybuilder. <laughs> I think you, it was more like was. Chippendales. I have think someone seen, needs yeah. to go back and look at that script. Have you seen guys like that show up at parties before, Courtney? I mean, I've <laughs> seen it in a movie, Keith. Yeah. Of course. You've heard. We've all heard, yes. She's not, She's not that kind of girl. No. Here, here's the better question. If you get to, like, if you go to, let's say, Central Market, where they just have, like, the little sushi, do you get a guy that just does one of these? Get a, uh-uh. Just get a little <laughs> bump? Yeah, versus the full show. Well, I think someone's stretching that script. I don't know. But I'm just going to say, we'll, we'll tune in to check it out we'll for sure further analysis <laughs> <laughs> and go rockets of course yes come yes. on let's do it Clark city we, we need it. it here for sure thanks guys we'll see it for still ahead we're going to check in with local artist and performance painter Ange hills who's been working on a special creation with lauren kelly in our green room yeah and after the break from his favorite moments as a sports reporter to anchor to his family life get to know kprc channel 2's randy mcelroy next I'm James, the owner of the Baker's Man. And we're watching Houston Life. Come on, about Houston Life. This is Bayou Boys, and we watch every day from Needville. Hi, guys. I miss being with you in the studio. Congrats on your new 3 o'clock time. I'm sending you loads and loads of good karma. Hope to see you soon. I can feel the love tonight. Oh, I love all of our shout-outs. It's so nice. Thanks to each and every one of you for sending those in. It is like a virtual hug. I know I it say it really every time, is. but it feels so great to see that. It does. It's awesome. All right, shifting gears now. The Texans will kick off football season next Thursday, and KPRC Channel 2 Sports Director Randy McElvoy will, of course, be there. Absolutely. He knows all things Houston sports, but today we are getting a chance to know him, and he's joining us now from Studio A to share some of his favorite moments on the job and his life outside of TV. Wait, you have a life outside of TV, Randy? <laughs> Not much of one, no. <laughs> it's a, especially during the fall with football, right? Hey, it's great to see you guys. I was disappointed I couldn't be in the studio with I know. you, though. I know. It's great to chat with you, and I, yeah. and I love these conversations as well. Um, we got to shot a spotlight on this. I mean, unless you're living under a rock, yeah. but we have to tell people you are a Houston boy, born and raised here. You grew up in Maryland, right? I, I grew up literally five minutes <laughs> down the road from Channel 2 in Maryland. Yeah, I went to Bel Air High School. Uh, my mom still lives in the, the house I grew up in, so uh, this, this neck of the woods, this is my uh, part of Houston over here, South Park. Park. Randy, is it true that you have worked in television now for 32 years? Uh, I just wrapped up 31. I started in 1989. Wow. Yeah. And wow. at what point did you realize that this was a thing? Because, you know, sports is, yeah. a lot of us watch sports, right? Covering right. sports, it's a totally different ball game. <laughs> oh, no pun intended. I but, like that. But like it that. is a tough, tough gig. So tell us yeah. about this journey to finding this job and you, career path. You, you know what? When I, uh, I I was hooked on, and I tell the story a lot. I, I was hooked on TV news as a kid. I love watching the newscasts on TV. Don't ask me why. I just did. I, I thought it was fascinating that they would get video from all over the place. How did it come in? So I was hooked early, and of course I was a, 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 an athlete uh, growing up into high school. Played baseball at Bel Air High School and uh, walked on at Sam Houston State as well. So I went to Sam Houston and I I'd got a little bit of experience at Bel Air with a little cable patchwork job we did. Uh, we did live newscasts during the, the lunch hour, which is pretty cool back, uh, back in the 80s. That was a big deal. Uh, and then uh, at Sam Houston State, I, I walked on for a couple of years, finished baseball and just really locked into what I wanted to do. Sam Houston's got a, a well-known journalism department and really enjoyed uh, the experiences I got there. It led to some internships at all the stations here in town, including Channel 2. Uh, back in 1986, I, I had a summer internship here. And, um, you know, I, was, I just love being a part of it, being around Houston sports growing up to going to games at the Astrodome, at the summit, the old summit with the Rockets, Lakewood Church now. And uh, you know what? I, the doors open, went to Beaumont, 
uh, for about seven years, Dallas for about seven years, and I've been here 16 years now. Yeah, I remember uh, when you first came aboard uh, to KPRC, um, I remember, you know, meeting you for the first time. Yeah. And I, I think what's so incredible is just watching you grow over the years. And I've always loved your sports cast and well, always kind of leaned on you too. Like, Randy, what do you think? What's going to happen? You well, know? Well, at the, end of the end of the day, I mean, there's some tough stories out there yeah. in every newscast. And you got, you know, weather, Frank has a good time, Justin, and they'll have a good time too when you can. But when it's serious with hurricanes, it's stuff that's a big deal but sports is is a way a, a door that kind of opens to to have some fun with the viewers and you get a chance to do that every night uh, even when the teams aren't playing great that's the difficult part but when they're playing well like they have in recent years Astros mm -hmm. World Series uh, Rockets are always a playoff team Texans go to the playoffs it makes it fun to cover and uh, not only that, but the, the college level and definitely the high school level as well. We have a great time covering high school sports. And Randy, it's so great as we're showing all these still photos on screen, just sort of looking back over the course of your career. And I know people probably ask you some yeah. of the standout moments. You have really been... Hey, um, my shark's tooth. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. I know. That's your... <laughs> and a random photo of some shark teeth. <laughs> Sorry about that. Out of nowhere. <laughs> but yeah. what moments really stand out for you? Because you have been there really on the front lines with some of the most iconic names in sports. I have, you know, as far as like, if you're asking about like events I've had to I've had a chance to cover, I mean, I really have, especially the 16 years here at Channel 2, and, and being a, an avid baseball fan like I am, the, the, the Astros runs, I got here in 04 and they immediately made it to the NLCS uh, against the St. Louis Cardinals, and then the following year, they're in the World Series for the first time, so I, I was here a year, uh, actually based here in Houston, and uh, got the chance to experience that World Series. That one didn't go well, but then, then they came back and, and won it a few years ago. Uh, man, World Series, I've covered national championship games. Uh, one of my favorite memories of Texas Longhorns in 06, playing Southern Cal out in, in L.A., Pasadena. And when Vince Young, a Houstonian, grew up here at Madison High School, uh, you know, ran it in late. It's one of the best college football games you'll ever see, and I was on the sidelines right there when it happened with my photographer, Alan Reed, and he ran right past us. I mean, that was a wow. great man. I looked at Alan, and I said, you just know we just witnessed one of the iconic moments in college history. football right. history. And to this day, people still talk about that national championship won by, uh, by Texas. But, uh, man, I've, I've had a chance to, to interview so many great people. Um, uh, Bum Phillips was one yeah. that always stands out that I have on my list growing up here with the Love You Blue back in the late 70s. Uh, before he passed away, I had a chance to go to Goliad. Uh, mm. when I was here at Channel 2 probably 10 years ago or maybe a little bit more. I uh, went to his ranch in Goliad and got to spend about three hours with Bum oh. there riding the property with him. I mean, they, it was it was incredible. It was, it was like I was like pinching myself. I was hanging out with Bum Phillips. Um, yeah, it, that's the beauty of this job. It, it's something new every day in sports and the, the, the great people you get to be around, the stories you get to tell. There's so many stories out there. Absolutely. That people want to hear on, on every level. And I emphasize high school level. We're, we, we really put an emphasis on high school sports because it, they deserve to be covered here in this city. Oh, yeah. Uh, and could be overshadowed by the pro teams. But we try to balance it out and give, obviously, a lot of love to the professional teams as well because of the interest. So. And we do fun. need to, uh, we're out of time, Randy, but okay. we do want to mention that the reason reason why that shark tooth <laughs> photo came up yeah. is that's your collection that you've had since you were a kid. Right. I, probably age seven or eight, I got hooked on it because my, my mom really enjoyed it. And as uh, much time as we spent at the beach, you just get that collection. And, uh, man, I got jars of this that's stuff. That's awesome. And that big one right there, that was I remember very well. I was probably that's 10 years old when I saw that's that That's so one. awesome. Well, say hi to Tammy, your wife, of 30 will. years this past February. So congratulations Thank on you. that anniversary and the rest of the women in your life, your daughter, Courtney, and uh, Keely awesome. as well. Hey, great to see you guys. Keep up the good work. Great show. Thanks, Thanks Randy. Randy. See ya. And a reminder, of course, the Texans' season opener against the Chiefs is just six days away. You can watch Patrick Mahone's take on Deshaun Watson right here on Channel 2. Yeah, next Thursday. And when we come back, he's been busy working on a special project for us today. We're going to check in with a local artist on Chills next. Welcome back. Local performance speed painter Anch Hills has been painting for most of his life. He grew up in Rwanda, but his love of art led him to the U.S. where he's continued developing his craft, Courtney. Well, the world watched him quickly create a beautiful painting at the memorial service for George Floyd back in June. And today, he's here to show off his incredible talent. Lauren Kelly is live with Anj in our KPRC green room. Hi, Lauren. I cannot wait to hear about this and see the painting. Let me tell you something. This is a talent I have never seen before in my life. Performance painting live. I have been watching him paint this for 40 minutes, 
And I am just in awe of his talent. And he not only does speeding, uh, speed painting, Courtney and Derek, he does this live performance painting all over. So he can do gifts for family members and friends. He does paintings for celebrities. He did James Harden and J.J. Watt. He does things like Marilyn Monroe and Albert Einstein. And it's just such a treat to get to watch him in action painting these paintings. So he's going to finish the painting as I ask him a few questions about, Anj, how did you get into painting? How, how old were you when you picked up a paintbrush? Uh, it was since I can't remember. I was a very young person. I was a very young boy. And I uh, think my first painting, I was nine years old. But drawing, I've been drawing for a long time. I can't remember. What was the first thing that you painted? The first thing I painted was a human face. Yeah, that was my first painting. And you created. said for you, that's the easiest thing to paint. This, yes. Okay, human well, why don't we show our easiest. viewers the creation that you've been working on for okay. the last 40 minutes. Okay. Again, you guys, this is only 40 minutes in. It's supposed to be a black and white shadows picture. And just watching you make this is incredible. <laughs> so Thank you. I just am in so awe of your talent, and thank you for sharing it with us. Visualpaint.com is where you can find more of Anja's work on social media at Visual Paint for more. Derek and Courtney, what do you guys think? I am blown away. I thought he was going to be painting a portrait of, of you, you, Lauren. I, no, no, no. <laughs> I told you guys I was definitely kidding. I have to point out. How beautiful and white do Derek, your teeth, and Courtney, your teeth look? And your highlights are just amazing. Oh, my <laughs> word. And to be honest, like, we've never met him in person. So, I mean, if he's doing it, obviously, from a photo, it's a really incredible. It's really, really cool. You know, you could hire Ansh it's to come just... and, like, paint during a party or something. Yes. The fact that he does it so quickly, I think that's part of the magic, too. So, I know oh. maybe he can't totally hear us. But, Lauren, please send him a big thank you from us. I absolutely will, and he's very excited to finish this painting. I think it looks wonderful. And uh, Anj Hills, thank you so much for joining us. You did a fantastic job. They love it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> what an incredible talent. Lauren and Anj, they thanks so impressed. much. Unbelievable. Okay, guys, coming up next, a simple guide to help you get started investing in real estate. Our financial expert shares four ways to do so next. Finance Friday, and our next guest is sharing his guide to real estate investing made easy with four different strategies to help you get started. It's one thing to earn a paycheck and save, and another to put that money to work for you. Certified financial planner and president of Shakiba Capital, Trevor Shakiba, is joining us now. Welcome to the show. Happy Friday, Trevor. Indeed, back at you. Okay, well, let's get started on this. I know a lot of people hear this and maybe think, oh, I don't have the means to do real estate or to invest. And this is something I think very obtainable for so many people. Yeah, absolutely. And look, we had a, a lot of interest a couple weeks ago when we talked about why real estate could be such a great investment to help you diversify out of the stock market. And the other point I made was, remember, when you look at folks that are financially independent, 90% of them, 90% of all U.S. millionaires are invested in real estate. So that should get your attention. But my first point that I really got to make here, Courtney, is you've got to have money to invest in real estate. And so I get that question a lot. And my question back to all the viewers is, is your financial house in order first? Have you, you know, paid off your debts? Do you have uh, the appropriate amount of savings and budgeting? So I always like to point that out first. Um, but yeah, real estate, you can absolutely invest in real estate. The easiest way is probably through a mutual fund or an index fund or an ETF. A lot of 401ks have this option. Just, just pay close attention to what they're invested in. Is it international? Is it U.S.? And then figure out how much you should allocate towards that. Typically 5%, 6%, maybe 8%, depending on your risk tolerance, is a great way to get started. Okay, a mutual fund. So for someone who's thinking of investing in real estate, going out and buying a rental property, we will get to that, Trevor, because that works too, but you don't necessarily have to do that to get started. Let's talk about something called an REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. Break this down. Yeah, you know, a lot of, a lot of folks haven't heard of this, but this is a 
somewhat popular way to invest in real estate. And really all that is, is it's a company which operates income producing real estate. Now this could be all different types of real estate. It could be warehouse or office or apartments. There's different kinds. It could be a public or a private real estate investment trust. The thing here is just be careful. Uh, usually the private real estate investment trusts are illiquid. Sometimes you have, a, have to have a certain net worth and just pay attention to the fees. Um, you, you, most people should probably not look at those until they get into a higher income bracket or net worth bracket, but those are out there and sometimes they can make a lot of sense. And I think a lot of times now people see all these shows, you know, flip, flipping houses oh, or no. buying rental homes or doing, but you say do it yourself and consider getting a rental home, a rental property. Yeah, well, look, it can make a lot of sense, but you hit the nail on the head. Um, there's a lot of TV shows out yeah. there. It's not like TV usually. We're not all chipping, you know, Joanna Gaines. <laughs> so just be careful here. I've seen a lot of uh, issues and problems. Make sure you run the numbers. Here's the other thing. It's not just a mortgage. So if you get a single family rental home, it's, it is mortgage, principal and interest, but it's also HOA fees insurance, taxes, maintenance, you've got to add all of that up to make sure that it can make sense. Now, everybody's heard this term or this phrase, tenants, toilets, and termites, and that is an element of owning real estate. So make sure you realize that there could, could be things that go wrong. And so are you going to manage it? Um, do you want another job? Maybe you do. Or are you going to get a management company? And there's a cost to that. Again, so you have to factor that in. Make sure you understand the numbers and what you're getting yourself into. Being realistic, I think, is very, <laughs> very critical before you buy a rental property. Trevor, let's talk about joining a group or a syndication. This has become more and more popular lately. We hear about people sort of going in on real estate together, like in a group where maybe you own an apartment building. So explain how this works. Yeah, and it has become a lot more popular, especially for larger projects. And look, this is what we're doing at Shakiba Capital. Um, but again, you've got to be careful. Do your due diligence. Um, it can be a completely passive option, which is different from owning that single family rental yourself. So a lot of people that are very busy or own businesses, they want to own this type of real estate. You can get into it in this, in this way. Usually you have to have a certain net worth uh, or income, so you want to check that. But but the great thing about this is, is that you can own the real uh, the real asset itse itself together. So it would allow you to do bigger projects, like a big apartment complex or an office building or things like that. And as we talked about last week or a couple weeks ago, there's significant tax advantages uh, potentially. So, you know, in summation, real estate can be a great investment. It does have risk. There's no investment that doesn't have risk. Just think through it, make sure it can fit your risk tolerance and allocation to help you achieve those financial goals. And I think all of these points, Trevor, are so great. And whether it's on someone's vision board or a bucket list, the takeaway today is to really get your finances in order. Take a good look at what you are spending and saving before you jump into the next thing. Yeah, well, look, I, I think that's always the, the takeaway, right? To really achieve your financial goals, you have to have a plan. You have to know where you're at. And then you've got to figure out what you need to do to get to, 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 to that objective. Real estate can be a great investment to help you do that, but it's certainly one aspect of that bigger plan. And a lot of times you need to start at the fundamentals. And, and you know, if you need to make more or save more, pay off that debt, get that cash reserve in place. Those are the starting points, but real estate can certainly be a great investment for a lot of the viewers out there. Yeah, and a great way to, as you mentioned, potentially earn some passive income, literally earning money while you sleep. Trevor Shakiba, thanks so much for your time. You bet, thank you. And to any of our viewers, if you are looking for a brand new way to invest, you can connect with Trevor by visiting shakibacapital.com. And we'll be right back. Well, welcome back. We are just about out of time here on Houston Life. We do want to point out a little programming note. No Houston Life on Monday, folks, on Labor Day. I know it's bad news, but the good news is NBC will have coverage of the PGA Tour Championship. And coming up on Tuesday's show, get to know our newest team member, 
Joe Sam, plus a lesson in beer pairings with Eighth Wonder Brewery. That's going to be an amazing Tuesday. Also, guys, now we're jumping all over the calendar here. Don't forget, tomorrow on NBC, coverage starts at 1.30. Of course, the Kentucky Derby. I got to get my horse ready. You got to get your hat and your julep. We do have all the recipe ideas on our website. Yeah, are you gonna are you gonna watch the coverage? Are you gonna always. celebrate? Put on your big hat? Yes, always. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I think so too. This Labor Day weekend, just be sure to stay safe, folks. Wear your yes. masks and we certainly want everyone to live long, healthy lives, don't we? Absolutely. Wear your masks.